All right, so we're going to look at Webster's method, and obviously my last name is Webster, so I have a, a little bit of affinity for this method. Not that it really, not really, actually. But um, but this is uh, Daniel Webster, named after Daniel Webster, not me, obviously. And um, if you haven't noticed, all of these methods are named after um, famous United States politicians, okay? And there's reasons for that that... Uh, May talk about well, we'll talk about on maybe the forums or, or some other place, but um, named after Daniel Webster and uh, famous famous politician. Okay. Now this one is again a choose the right divisor, so we're not going to do the standard divisor. We're going to do a different divisor, and instead of always rounding everything down or always rounding everything up like Jefferson's and Adam's method. In Webster's method, you just do standard rounding. Okay? So you're not always, you know, taking the lower quota or the upper quota, you're taking the standard rounding number. And it turns out that Webster's method, uh, because you're using the standard rounding, sometimes you'll have to pick a number a little bit above the standard divisor, other times you might have to pick a number that's a little bit below the standard divisor. Um, so it is a little bit uh, trickier about you know, where to, to go up or lower, but it will be the number you choose will be closer to the standard divisor. Okay? And sometimes could even be the standard divisor. And because the number that you're dividing by is closer to the standard divisor, there's even though you can have quota violations, it's less likely in Webster's method. Okay, it's the least likely of, of all the of all the methods which have different divisors. All right, so we're going to take our uh, trusty example here, thirty-eight thousand and all that kind of stuff, and we want a hundred representatives. So I want you to push pause and try to do what I what I said here. Obviously, standard divisor is still a thousand. So I want you to pick uh, a couple of divisors, maybe start going a little bit higher, maybe a thousand and five, or maybe go a little bit lower, like 990. And get a modified quota, and then use standard rounding to get the number of representatives. So push pause, um, try to do this, and come back and see what you get. All right, so let me just uh, sort of tell you what I came up with. I came up with a divisor of 995.5, okay? And this one is a little bit tough because um, you started out with a standard divisor. Here's my divisors and my representatives. I started out with a 1,000 uh, just to test that standard divisor out. You get 99 representatives, okay? So you know you need to get lower. And so then I went down to 995, and you get 100 representatives. That's 995. And then I went to, well, I said, well, maybe halfway, excuse me, not 100. I got 101 representatives with 995. I got up to 997, and you go back to 99. So you think, ah, oh, let's go halfway, 996. You're still at 99. So you say, well, halfway between 5 and 6 is 995.5, and all of a sudden I magically got to 100. Okay? And so with 995.5, your modified quotas are 38.516. Four point nine two one, twenty point four nine seven, and fifteen point one nine one. And the the reason why that took a little bit was because these two decimals were so close to point five. And so when you did nine ninety six, 
you know, they both came to slightly under 0.5. When you did 995, they both came to slightly above 0.5. So you kind of split the difference, and one of them does and one of them doesn't come above and below 0.5. So anyways, um, that was the issue. Our numbers of representatives, here we'd get 39. Here we'd get 21. Standard rounding would give you 5, would give you 20, and would give you 15 in the last spot. Which, if you add that all up, you should get 100 total representatives. Okay? So that's uh, Webster's method. So I want you to try one more. This is our other standard example, 120 representatives. I want you to find a, a divisor. Um, and again, standard divisor, when you actually calculate this with 120 representatives, was like 83.98. And so try this, try Webster's method with the standard rounding and see what you get. Okay, find a divisor that works. All right, so hopefully you got uh, something similar that I did. Basically, I came up with a divisor of 83.75. And again, I had to sort of narrow it down. I chose, I start with my standard divisor. Most of the times I start with a standard divisor. I got 119. So I know I had to go down with the divisor. Then I went down to 83 and I got 122. And I went up to 83 and a half and got 121. And so halfway between 83.5 and 83.98, I decided to call it 83.75. And sure enough, I got 120 in that case. All right. But so it, again, these things, this process takes time to actually do. But once I, once I had uh, done it, I got 31.463. Notice I'm being careful to, to make sure that I put in the decimal point versions. I don't want to put in this as 31.5 because then I get a sort of double rounding. I'd have to round up in Webster's method if it was 31.5. But since it's 31.46, um, the number of representatives in Web Webster's method is going to be 31. All right. And then um, this becomes 8.502. Twenty-four point zero one two, 46.233. So what I'm saying is you have to be pretty careful about the decimal points in Webster's method. Uh, 925, 6.925, and 3.2. So standard rounding, 31, 9, 24, 46, 7, and 3 representatives. And if you add all those things up, you come up with 120 representatives just like you wanted to. Okay? So that's the example, uh, or that's two examples of Webster's method. Again, all of it hinges on trying to get the right divisor. And if we can get the right divisor then we're going to be sitting in good shape. And again, sometimes it's going to take a while to actually get the right divisor. All right, it's not going to always come easy um, for these things. Okay, now I will say on the test or something, I might give you a hint uh, of where to start looking um, or maybe that I might say, okay, this is going to be the divisor. But on a homework or on the exercises or, or on your own, you'd have to come up with, with the actual right divisor. All right, there we go. Now, I mentioned this in the very beginning, but I, I do want to say you can get quota rule violations with this method as well, although because of the standard rounding and the fact that usually the divisor you choose is pretty close to the standard divisor, um, you tend not to get them as much as the other two methods. The other two, you know, manipulating with divisor methods. So Jefferson's method, um, Adams' method, and Webster's method can all lead to quota rule violations, 
although Webster's method is kind of the, the least likely to do so. All right. Um, so, so there you go. That's, there's four methods of apportionment, Hamilton's, uh, Jefferson's, Adams, and Webster's. And you can see that each one has some uh, drawbacks in terms of paradoxes or quota rule violations. And all of them kind of have some nice properties, too. With Hamilton's method, you won't get a quota rule violation. Uh, with the other methods, you don't get the new state paradox or the population paradox or things like that. Okay, so we can see that some of them have good and some of them have bad qualities. But there, there are all four methods explained.